give you and the public at large an update about our campaign for the 2023 elections, which is just a few weeks away from today. And also, we believe we are people who have come from social movements and people who have been working towards ensuring transparency and accountability, especially in public life. And uh, so we also, from the very beginning, have maintained that we will be keeping in line with our belief in transparency and accountability. So today we also will be uh, sharing with you our disclosure of accounts uh, till date in our campaign. Uh, as you know, uh, you know, elections and especially electoral <coughs> financing, election spending is something which is so secretive, which many of us don't even know, even though it's mandatory to file reports to the ECI post an election, but not many parties are up to disclosing the kind of financing that they get from where and how much they spend on what. And uh, especially after the introduction of electoral bonds, we know that it has become that much more opaque. And so we believe for us from the very beginning that if what we are trying to do is to bring in a change in governance and in the electoral process, it has to begin with the campaigning process itself. And so <clears throat> we have to be able to constantly share with the public not just our finances, but also our mode of campaigning. What are we doing in the campaigns? Uh, so I'll give you first a little brief of what we have been doing in the past seven to eight months. As you know, for us, being from the social justice movement, we are people who have engaged with people over many, many years. And so campaigning for the election has not been different at that level. It has been about meeting people, talking to people, and most of all, listening to people. And we want to put on record our gratitude to each and every household that has opened their doors to us to come and meet them, to have a, an understanding from them about what are the issues they are facing, what are the issues in the constituency, and also the expression of what they hope for our state. So we're very happy because almost 70% in every of these three constituencies, East, North, and South Shillong, we have been able to meet at least 70% of the households in these constituencies. <coughs> And we have learned so much. And when we went to meet people, we felt that we should not just, you know, go and spend five minutes and say hello, <coughs> we're going to um, contest elections and please vote for us. We feel that people have a right. People have a right to know their, <coughs> who they are going to elect. They have a right to know who the candidates are. Which is why, from the very beginning, we had spent quite a bit of whatever we raised on publishing a lot of campaign material. Every household we went to, we distributed this, which is in three different languages, Hindi, Khasi, English, and some places even Bengali or Nepali or whatever the language in that area demanded. It is like a letter to the people where we talk about who we are. People have a right to know our background. What is our educational background? What work have we done? And what, why are we contesting elections? So that was one of the materials we distributed to each and every household. The second is the CAM document, which is very elaborate because we feel that there has to be a basis on which we are launching our fight and our struggle to better our state. And the come document highlights in detail what we stand for, almost sector-wise. So we believe that people also were very happy to receive these documents. 
because many of them have engaged with us on these documents, have questioned us or have disagreed with us. And the other thing which we distributed was this survey form. It's a two-sided survey form, again in different languages. And the purpose of this survey form was, again, to understand from the people what is it that we need for our state and our constituencies. The survey form tried to capture people's <laughs> hopes and aspirations. What are the things that have not been done in the constituencies? And it's also trying to capture what is it that people are looking for in a candidate and a legislator. And many people have sent back these forms. And this form will be the basis of our manifesto. We believe that we are building a people's manifesto. It is not something that we are just sitting in a corner and imagining. Kam's manifesto for this election is a people's manifesto, which is going to talk about what we need to do at state level and what we need to do at constituency level. And this manifesto is the voice of the people captured through our survey. So uh, from this survey, I will share with you some of the things that have come back. We are still working on putting together the nitty gritties okay, of things like infrastructure or other uh, physical requirements in a constituency which people have indicated through the forms. But I'll share with you about some of the other things that they have communicated to us through this form. And that being that 90% of the people have said that Representatives should be people who are able to legislate, to make laws and policies, to improve the lives of the people. We know that we're celebrating 50 years of statehood, but in this 50 years, we don't have a law which, you know, is there solely for the betterment of the people. We have not had any innovative legislation that will ensure, for instance, that we open the way to ensure employment, to ensure health care, to better education. And people have said that they want the representatives to do this, to bring laws and legislations. 90% of the people who have come back to us have said that they want a representative, they want candidates, who are honest, who are not corrupt, who are accessible, and who offer an alternative to nepotism and favoritism. 50% of the respondents have also expressed that what they really want is for representatives who have a reputation of honesty and who have a track record of working in the interest of the people. And I think this point here is really important because as you know now especially when we're just a few weeks away from the elections in some of the constituencies we're in last minute candidates have come up we need to put a question mark about what they hope to do in just a few weeks to the elections did they not think it was important to meet people, to talk to people, to understand the constituency better? So what is it that the last minute contenders have to offer? And this is important because people have clearly said that we need people to not just pop up, but people whom we can look back at their work and at their life and know that they're people who actually strive for the betterment of all and for common good. So this is a very interesting um, exercise. It has been really interesting for us. And we will also build our manifesto, as I said, based on this. In addition to those points about what kind of legislator they hope to have, they have also indicated, as I said, other everyday things that affect their lives. And those also will be clearly reflected in our manifesto. Now today's uh, press conference is also because we wanted to share with you the expenses 
and the fundraising that we as a campaign have been involved in. The Come campaign is a people's campaign in every way, in the sense that our manifesto also is being written by the people. And it is the people who are supporting this campaign in so many ways, not just monetarily. From the very beginning, we have had people who have supported us through their skills. When we produced our literature, people who could sketch said, we'd like to sketch something for you. When we produced the Anthem of Solidarity, our artists in the state said, we want to sing that song for the people. And in addition to all of these talents and skills, people have also donated. And it is heartening because out of the nine lakh plus donations that we have received till date, 47% of the donations, that is four lakh plus, four lakh 36,000, are donations that have come from the people of Meghalaya. And donations have come in in 100 rupees, 200, 2,000, 5,000, you know, in varying amounts. And out of this, there are also people from the rest of the country who believe that a campaign like ours in Meghalaya is something that they have been waiting for even in the country because some of those people have also themselves been part of campaigns across the country where people who were not expected to contest elections through people's support have won elections. So again, we want to put on record our thanks to all of these people who have donated. And out of the nine lakhs plus that we have raised, the expenditure till date has been almost three lakhs for printing, for the solidarity anthem, for conveyance, for uh, running our offices at Hari Sabha and Malki, and also um, towards refreshments sometimes when we're having our pocket meetings and uh, working uh, long hours. So the balance amount with us now is about six lakhs. And you have to remember that this nine lakhs is an amount that has come for the people for three candidates. So nine lakhs plus for three constituencies with an expenditure of almost three lakhs till date. And now once again, we have launched our appeal to the people that we will need to raise a little more. And today we will also be releasing our video appeal in Kasi uh, for people who still wish be part of this campaign and who wish to contribute towards this campaign.